Hey, I'm David Pope, and welcome to this week's research review on medial tibial stress syndrome. We're going to be talking about how you can diagnose it reliably using the history and physical examination, and it's based on an article that's just come out in BJSM Online First from Winters, Backer, Moen, Barton, to Ewan and Weir. So great article, and I'm looking forward to sharing some of the research with you. So this is the article, Online First. Now, what you're going to discover in this webinar is how you can reliably diagnose MTSS, medial tibial stress syndrome, what the pathology that's proposed in MTSS is, what signs indicate chronic exertional compartment syndrome, and some other conditions that often coexist with MTSS. So first off, what is MTSS? So in this study, they defined it as exercise-induced pain along the posterior medial tibial border, and they had to reproduce it, their recognizable pain when they palpated the posterior medial tibial border over a length of greater than five consecutive centimeters. I've drawn it with this purple arrow on the picture here, this beautiful picture that came from another article out of BGSM on fat pads adjacent tendinopathy. So that's how you diagnose it. You're looking for some of the most important points are that it's on that posterior medial tibial border and more than five consecutive centimeters. And we're gonna talk about why that's important shortly. So how do we diagnose it? Well, first off, it's actually a clinical diagnosis and that's our gold standard. Because the pathology has not been clearly outlined and it's a bit equivocal and bony overload and periosteal, periosteal inflammation have both been reported, this is the gold standard that they compare MRI and CT when they're performing studies on this. So the gold standard is clinical diagnosis. So what did the study investigate? They basically looked at whether you can have an inter-rater reliability if you standardize your questions that you ask and that physical examination to diagnose MTSS. So what was a population? Now in this study, it was performed in the Netherlands and they performed it on athletes that were greater than 16 years old and they had to have had a gradual onset of any lower leg pain for at least a week and they were eligible for, for inclusion. They didn't place any further restrictions on the location of their pain, just about had to be anywhere in the lower leg. Who was excluded? They excluded anyone that had a traumatic cause for the pain or history of tibial fracture. They had 52 athletes in this study and 49 of them met the inclusion criteria. And as you can see, the majority were females. So what questions did they ask in the subjective history? So this is their algorithm that they use, and it's a really nice way of going through your subjective to identify if there is a potential MTSS. So in our first question, they said, do you have the presence of exercise-induced pain along the distal two-thirds of the medial tibial border? So if you answered yes, move on to the second part. Is your pain provoked by, during or after physical activity, and then reduced with relative rest? So activity-based pain. If you did, was it a cramping or burning pain over that posterior compartment and or numbness or pins and needles in the foot? So if you had that, they excluded you and considered that it could be some chronic exertional compartment syndrome present or along with your MTSS. So if they passed all these subjective tests, they were suspecting MTSS and you moved on to this objective testing. So first off, first test, they palpated along that posterior medial tibial border and they wanted to identify your recognizable pain or the runner's recognizable pain for greater than five centimeters. So they're looking at the area. So if it was less than five centimeters, you headed out of that algorithm or if it wasn't your pain, you were out as well. So if you did, you carried on through the algorithm and it said, did you have any other symptoms not typical of MTSS? And within that, they're looking for any visible or severe swelling or erythema along that medial border, and then you were considered likely to not have MTSS. If you did have the typical symptoms, you headed down and you're into this medial tibial stress syndrome basket and characterize as having it. If you didn't, you are likely not MTSS and you had something else. To do this, they used two raters that made an independent blinded diagnosis. And what did they find? That MTSS can be diagnosed with almost perfect reliability in clinical practice. 
Some of their other findings were pretty interesting. So they had some concurrent lower leg injuries that were often present. So you're looking at about 32% of these athletes also had a concurrent injury that could be identified reliably. Now, when they looked at imaging for diagnostic purposes, the imaging could be used to rule out your other entities that had a known pathogenesis. So if you had something like a stress fracture, you suspected, or something else like an osteosarcoma that didn't fit your typical MTSS symptoms and you wanted some confirmation, that's when imaging can be used to rule it out. So what about stress fractures? They had this arbitrary cutoff value of five centimeters to try and differentiate between your focal pain, where they might suspect that you had a tibial stress fracture, and your more diffuse pain that's associated with MTSS along that posterior medial tibial border. So they didn't have any evidence that this five centimeters was uh, the actual cutoff value, but they use that as their, their study-based uh, cutoff. So the other finding was with stress fractures that you might consider your imaging to rule out a tibial stress fracture when an athlete presents with less than five centimeters of pain in your clinical practice. One of the things that's really important to note in this study, they didn't have any athletes that were clinically suspected of having a tibial stress fracture. And that really is one of the differential diagnoses you want to be keeping an eye out for when you're assessing these overuse injuries that are on the, post, the posteromedial aspect of the tibia. We also know that in lots of other areas like Australia, the US and the UK, that tibial stress fractures are much more prevalent. And so we know that it might affect how easy it is to distinguish between your MTSS and your tibial stress fractures. So they really need a bit more investigation in areas like these where your stress fractures are more common to try and differentiate between MTSS and your tibial stress fractures. So that's the article, great article done by Winters et al. and coming out in BJSM online first just recently. So if you enjoyed that, you'll probably enjoy a webinar that we held that you can get access to for free with Dr. Rich Willey on how to perform a running assessment. So jump on over, that one takes you through exactly how you can perform a running assessment on your patients. That's well worth watching and you can get free access to that. So you can get that over at clinicaledge.co slash free webinar. And really want to thank BJSM. Go and check out all their resources. They have a lot of great articles and that's at bjsm.bmj.com and Clinical Edge Platinum members also get access to the full BJSM journal articles as well. Say hi to me on Twitter. I'm at David K. Pope. Let me know if you enjoyed this research article and research review and what you enjoyed about it. Also, follow Karim Khan, BJSM underscore BMJ on Twitter. He shares a lot of great stuff on there as well. So hope you enjoyed this research review. If you found us anywhere else besides on our website, head on over and check out all our resources over at clinicaledge.co and I'll look forward to catching you on the next research review or on the website or on Twitter. You have a great day.